fine supper. <laughs> well, so the society butterfly done come back to her cocoon. <laughs> I never spent such an afternoon in my life. We had the regular monthly meeting of the women's auxiliary. Oh, uh, Blabbermouse Incorporated. <laughs> been to a home like Mrs. Van Pelt's. She's real society. Oh, so you're mixing up with the hoy polluted, huh? <laughs> I got quite friendly with Mrs. Van Pelt. I invited her and her husband over here next Thursday night. Oh, so you met him too? Mm-hmm. He's a very distinguished man, George. He was busy all day doing research at the library. Well, now about Thursday night, honey. I don't like her. Now look, George, I don't want any argument. It's about time you met some decent people instead of that horrible, uncouth group you associate with. Uh, it would do you good to meet a man with accomplishments like Mr. Van Pelt. Well, I don't met all the accomplished people I want to know. Like Andrew Brown, for instance. Yeah, like Andrew Brown. Well, what, may I ask, has he ever accomplished? Well, he, uh, just yesterday, he had a run of 13 balls in the side pocket without once leaning on the pool table. <laughs> what I'm talking about. And they're hanging over pool tables. You'd never find him in a public library. No, they ain't got no pool tables in there. <laughs> it's all settled. They're coming over next Thursday night. All right, all right. Oh, and George, I need a dress for the occasion. Why, certainly. I wouldn't expect you to meet them in your camisole. <laughs> I'm talking about a new dress and not one of those cheap ones either. I want to make an impression on the Van Pelts. And unless you do something about getting me a new dress, there's going to be plenty of trouble around here. George Stevens, if you don't do something about getting me a new dress, they're going to be trouble. And I mean that, you big lummox. They're going to be trouble. And that's what she said to me, Calhoun. <laughs> uh, you know, sound to me like she's hinting for a new dress. <laughs> oh, I bet you got a dress, Kingfish, right there in that box there. No, Calhoun, this is what I'm going to use to get the dress with. I don't get it. Well, this is the only thing of value that I could think of. Uh, this is a sapphire fur coat that you had in cold storage, and I just took it out this morning. Oh. Yeah, thinking on selling the thing and using the money to buy her a dress with. Yeah. What kind of fur is it, anyway? Oh, it's a very unusual fur, that muscat dyed squirrel. Yeah. <laughs> Who you figuring on selling it to? Never mind, don't answer that. I know. Andy. Well, uh, you see Andy going around with a new girl. Yeah. And he ain't making such good time with her. And he kind of looking for a wedge. Yeah, I see. And then you're going to give the money to Sapphire, huh? No, I ain't, Calhoun. I'm going to buy the dress myself. You? Yeah, because every time she buys a dress, it's always out of style in about five years. Yeah. I gonna buy her a lifetime thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't see no reason why a man can't buy a dress as good as a woman know how. Oh, uh, yeah, and I tell you, Calhoun... Hey, Calhoun. Huh? When I get some money, why can't you go up to the department store with me? You know what they say, two heads is better than one. Yeah, well, I'll be glad to, Kingfish. Well, see you later. you doing serving drinks in here? Drinks? Yeah, huh? you got a sign out there that says salute. <laughs> Andy, that's salad. A fur salad. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and Andy, I'm very happy to see that I is in the fur business. Well, this is kind of sudden, ain't it? Oh, no, Andy. A year from now, I'll be celebrating my first anniversary. Yeah, time sure do pass, don't it? <laughs> Where's all these furs you selling? Well, now, Andy, our first-class selling like this don't uh, put the furs on display. We bring them out one at a time from the back. Uh, sit down right here, Andy, and I'll show you our display. Yeah, that's it.
Here you is, son. I'll take a gander at that. Yeah, yeah that'd make a nice rug, all right. A rug? <laughs> Andy, I'll have you to know that this is the latest in the wearing apparel. Just take a look at the beauty and the warmth of the thing. Yeah, yeah. Andy, would you be interested in that? Let's see. No, Kingfish, I just think I'll stick to my old top coat. Oh, no, no, Andy, not for you, but I mean something for you to give to your gal. Oh, my gal, huh? Well, just what kind of fur is this anyway, Kingfish? Andy, that's the rarest of all wildlife. The rare and beautiful and elusive mink. Mink? Yeah, Andy, just like this animal here. That looks more like a fox to me. Oh, Andy, that's a long leg mink. <laughs> I seen a mink in a window once, but it didn't look nothing like this. Well, Andy, uh, this is a brand new breed. Oh, it is, huh? Yeah, I know you heard of the other shades, the golden honey, the silver blue. But, Andy, this is the very latest thing, sunset orange. <laughs> that any man who would give his girlfriend a garment like this, he would be in solid for the rest of his life. Oh, this is beginning to make sense, Kingfish. With this jacket, I could really get in good with my new gal. Uh, how much you want for it? Well, Andy, I'll tell you what. I guess you know you done picked one of the most expensive furs there is. And as close as I is to you, I couldn't let it go for less than $50. That's a lot of money, all right, for mink. But being as this is sunset orange, I guess the sky's the limit, huh? OK, Kingfish, you got a deal. All right. Hey, yes, $50. Thank you. Uh, can you wrap it up for me? Oh, sure, Andy. I'd be glad to. <laughs> hey, weird son. Sorry I ain't got no ribbon. Yeah, well, I'll get on up and give it to my gal. Uh, thanks a lot, King B. Oh, don't mention it, Andy. Don't mention it. <laughs> You said Sunset Orange. That's right. That's what the furrier told me. Oh, that's the latest thing. Well, Andy, it's very nice, and I appreciate it. And I'm going to get a lot of wear out of it, but it's not mink. It ain't? No. Well, that's too bad, honey, because I done paid for mink. Well, don't worry about it, Andy, because I think it's just lovely, and I like it very much. And I'll have it for many, many years. Yeah. Women always make so much fuss about buying a dress. I guarantee you there's nothing to it. No, just a matter of using your head, that's all. Ooh, uh, how do you do there? Uh, excuse me, miss, but uh, would you wait on us, please? I'll be with you gentlemen in a moment. Mm, Sapphire's a 36. Yeah. We'll sort of look over the rack here until the sales lady can help us. Yeah. Mm, Deal's uh, 42. Forty, thirty-eight. Yeah, here's a thirty-six. Yeah. That is the biggest thirty-six I don't ever see. Yeah. Well, maybe you look at the number backwards, Kingfish. Maybe it's a sixty-three. Now, what can I do for you? Oh, I'd like to get one of these dresses for my wife. I need the thirty-sixes. Yes, everything from here on. I know we'll find something you like. <laughs> when is the big event? Well, uh, next Thursday, from 8.30 till 12. <laughs> 8.30 till 12? That right. I guess you've been looking forward to this for a long time. No, I just found it out yesterday. <laughs> I guess you and your wife are not the chatty sort. No, she just bounced into the house and told me the news. Does something like this appeal to you? Oh, uh, what do you think about it, Calhoun? Mm, no, that's a little too plain. Uh, she wants something she can dance around in. <laughs> I know it's none of my business, and I'm sure you know what you're doing. But if the event is as near as next Thursday, 
You won't have any use for this dress after that. Oh, well, I wouldn't say that, because we already done made a raiment for some rumble lessons for next Friday. <laughs> I wonder if I might speak to you privately for a moment. Oh, sure. Calhoun, we got to go up to the sixth floor. What do we got to go up to the sixth floor for? These dresses is all right. I don't see no sense in tramping all over the place. Come here, Calhoun. <laughs> <laughs> well, then we gonna walk up or use the elevator. <laughs> oh, George, it's beautiful. Well, I'm glad you like it, honey. Just absolutely beautiful. And it's the right size, too. Oh, I can tell from the material that it's an expensive dress. Oh, yeah, honey, that's the original copy of our slapperilli. But, George, how did you get the money for anything like this? Now, don't worry about that. You didn't sell anything of ours to get it, did you? Honey, how could you think a thing like that? Well, I'm sorry, George. It's just that it's so gorgeous. Well, honey, I'm gonna tell you a little secret. For the past four months, I've been putting away 50 cents a day out of my lunch money. Cause I done decided to buy you something really beautiful. Oh, George, I never knew you were so thoughtful. <laughs> oh, by the way, George, I heard from Mrs. Van Pelt today. Their plans have changed. Well, uh, what happened? Well, she forgot that the night I invited them over here is the night they're having their big society party. And they want us to come over there. Oh, and George, I do want to look nice. So first thing tomorrow morning, will you get my fur jacket out of storage? I don't know what to do. Well, it serves you right, Kingfish. First lying to me that you was in the fur business when it was Sapphire's coat, then selling it to me for mink. Oh, what is I gonna do? If Sapphire knew what happened to her coat, she never would forgive me. I tell you, boys, I ready to kill myself. Well, after hearing all the facts, that sounds like the best idea to me. <laughs> Andy, for the last time, I tell you, you got to get that coat back to me from that gal of yours. Nothing doing, Kingfish. Ever since I done give her that coat, she's been sweeter to me, and I've been getting more and more affection every day. You is? And this ain't no time for me to reverse the wheels of progress. Look, Andy. <laughs> my marriage is at stake. Kingfish, she wouldn't give it back to me anyway. And I ain't gonna ask her. Then you are nothing but a low-down coward. Coward? Ain't no man living ever called me that. Put up your dukes, Kingfish. That's okay by me. I'm gonna tear you apart. Oh, uh, now, take it easy, fellas. Ain't no sense in getting all excited about this thing. I'll show you who's a coward. Get ready to bleed, boy. <laughs> get out of the road, Amos. Yeah, look out, Amos, before you get hurt. And if I does, I'll be the only one. <laughs> Amos, didn't I tell you to stay out of the way? Oh, you ripped it there. There, yeah, tough fight. <laughs> End around one. All right. Well, I ain't gonna sit here and watch you two fellas waltz around. If I can help you, and they let me know. Oh, brother. Look, Andy, I'm sorry I called you a coward. Cause after all, we are brothers in that great fraternity, the Mystic Knights of the Sea. But look, Andy, do you think by any chance that she would give you that coat back if you ask her for it? Not a chance, Kingfish. Then, Andy, there's only one all turn to quit. We got to steal the coat back from her. What? Now, she don't know Calhoun, and I'm gonna get Calhoun to do the job. Oh, wait a minute, Kingfish. Look, Andy, you take Rosemary for a walk through the park tonight about 9 o'clock. Calhoun will be waiting there. And the whole thing ain't gonna take more than a few minutes. Mm. Well, let's see what I'm gonna do here. Stick him up! Stick him up! You heard me! 
Murphy, your first quote of your life. Gun and Luba, I'll spray you with this cannon. Don't do that. Stick him up. Stick him up. Stick him up. <laughs> well, that's the Halloween. Come here, you. <laughs> Calhoun. Sam! What goes? Oh, Sam, I'm so sure glad it's you. Well, you see, I'm I'm playing a little prank on Andy Brown. Oh, Andy, huh? Yeah, ain't nothing serious. I just play a little prank on him. Well, you can get into trouble this way. Yeah. Uh, okay, you better take it easy, Calhoun. Yeah, Sam, sure, Sam. <laughs> Could you help me with my coat, please? Yeah, let's hurry up. Oh, look at that. Look at that, look at that. Hey, look, look, look. Holy smoke, a hold up. Yeah, it wasn't it, all right. The Daniel got vibes. What I try to say, it's a hold up. Uh, well, Rosemary, give him the fur coat like he say. But he didn't ask for my fur coat, Andy. Oh, uh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, but that's what I want, all right, is your fur coat. He said it that time. I'm not going to give it to him. Oh, you ain't, huh? Trigger finger look like. Yeah. Listen, I'm not going to give you my fur coat. Now look, Rosemary, you gotta give it to him. After all, he's the holdup man and we're the victims. You don't want to violate the criminal code. If he wants something, I'll give it to him. Wait a minute. <laughs> Yeah, honey, I'll be uh, home in a little while. What's that? Your fur coat. No, I didn't forget it. I have an glaze for you. Yeah, and you'll have it in plenty of time for the party tomorrow night. I'll guarantee you that. Okay, honey. Well, Calhoun ought to be with the coat any minute now. This is the darndest thing I ever heard of, having Calhoun hold him up. Look, Amos, when you got your back to the wall, you can't be too choosy. And when Calhoun bring in that coat, all my trouble did over. Andy, where the coat? Didn't Calhoun get it? That Calhoun is the worst crook I done ever seen. He ought to be ashamed of himself. Oh, what happened, Andy? Rosemary wouldn't give him the coat and done chased him out of the park. Oh, <laughs> this is the end of the world. Not quite, Kingfish. And there's worse to come. Rosemary done told me tonight that me and her has been invited to the Van Pelt party and she's gonna wear the fur jacket. Well, boys, you've really got yourself a problem now. Two women going to a party and only one coat. I'd like to see just how you're gonna get out of this one. <laughs> well, that's all, Andy. I got it. Yeah, Andy, this schedule will work out pretty good. In fact, that's the only way we can work it. With two gals and one coat all going to the same party. Yeah, well, give me the schedule again, Kingfish. Well, Andy, first you take your gal to the party. Yeah. And then you pass it me the coat. I run home and give her to Sapphire and bring her to the party. Check. Then when we get ready to leave, I'll take Sapphire home first, and when she go in the bedroom, then I'll run back to the party and give you the coat. And then you can take Rosemary home. Double check. Yeah, I got the whole thing figured out here according to time. We better simonize our watches here. <laughs> You're gonna have a lot of running to do, Kingfish, back and forth to that party. Yeah, Andy, I'm glad it ain't a formal party because I figured on wearing my sneakers. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, hello, Rosemary. How are you, Mrs. Van Pelt? I'd like to introduce my escort, Mr. Brown. Uh, how do you do? How do you do, Mr. Brown? Won't you both come in? Uh, thanks. 
Uh, Mr. Brown, you may take Rosemary's coat and put it into the bedroom there. And I'll introduce her to the guests. Oh, you look so lovely. Do come and join us, Mr. Brown. Yeah. Thank you. George, I've been trying to reach you all over town. What's the idea of coming in here at the last minute with my coat? Well, honey, I told you I was going to have it glazed, and he just finished with it a little while ago. Well, it doesn't look any different to me. Hurry and help me into it. Come on, we're late. Yes, my dear. And this must be your husband. Do come in. Thank you. Everybody's here, Sapphire. Oh? Mr. Stevens, will you please take your wife's coat and put it into the bedroom there? And I'll start introducing her. Yeah, good idea. So glad you came. So glad you came. You know, the night when we were dancing the rumba and I sideswiped Miss Van Pelt, I think I dislocated one of my vertigos. Oh, too bad, George. Get my coat. Oh, are you leaving, Sapphire? Yes, we are, Rosemary. Well, we'll go together. Oh, fine. I'll get Andy. <laughs> Wait a minute, George. Rosemary and Andy are leaving with us now, too. Who's going where? With who? When? Andy and Rosemary are leaving with us. Oh, George, I forgot to say goodnight to Mr. Van Pelt. Oh, how nice of you to get my jacket, Mr. Stevens. I'll just put it over my shoulders. Let's go someplace where it's real exciting. I don't think you're going to find any place to top this. <laughs> you're going to tell Mr. Van Pelt goodbye. Oh, I'd better go say goodbye to him also. I wish I could put him in bed with pneumonia. Well, I'm all ready. Just put it over my shoulders, Andy. Has it been a delightful evening? Oh, yeah. Oh, you're trying on my coat, Sapphire. And it looks well on you. Your jacket, Rosemary? Oh, no, this is mine. Sapphire, you're mistaken. I can tell by the sleeve that this is my jacket. Why, Rosemary, don't be difficult. I should know my own jacket after all these years. You better stand back here with a shopping ain't going to be so good. Yeah. I don't guess there's no point in us running away, is there? No, Andy. On this deal, they'd track us down to the end of the earth. The thing to do is wait right here and take our medicine. Well, Rosemary, I know just what happened. George sold Andy my jacket in order to get me this dress. Well, there ought to be something done about it to teach them a lesson for pulling this stunt on us tonight. Well, you know, Sapphire, just as I told you before, I bought a jacket like this several years ago. And I bought it at Harrison Summers, too. I think I still have it. Really? Yes. Now, why don't I let Rosemary wear my jacket? It's be going at it hot and heavy in there now. Yeah. Well, on the basis of what Rosemary did to Calhoun, I think Sapphire's gonna get the worst of it. Oh, I think Sapphire can take care of herself. <laughs> Well, are we all ready? Uh, yeah. You in the clear, son. Well, uh, good luck, Kingfish. George, help me with my coat. I want to put it on. Uh, me too. <laughs> well, shall we go someplace and have coffee? Oh, that's a wonderful idea. Let's go. gentlemen, continue. There's no two ways about it, Doctor. We're as nutty as a couple of fruitcakes. Shag.
bit of Amos. The early afternoon, the Kingfisher's wife, Sapphire, had the weekly meeting of the women's club up in the Stevens' apartment. The meeting broke up about 4 o'clock. back of your car and put the turkeys in this, huh? Yeah, Andy, we're going out in the country and buy the turkeys for 35 cents a pound, and then we'll sell them to Sapphire's Woman's Club for 50 cents a pound. Yeah, that's the deal, Andy. Help me with this box. Oh, yeah. Uh, listen, Kingsley. With the gasoline and the trip out in the country and hauling the turkeys back, uh, is you sure we're going to make anything on this turkey deal? Well, Andy, here's the way I see it. With the normal profit plus the handling charges, coupled with the thumb on the steel and the gravel in the gizzard, we stand to make a uh, pretty neat profit. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mr. 
look like good players, all right. Yeah, now let me do the talking, Andy. Good morning, Mr. Palmer. Nice day, ain't it? Maybe. Well, how's everything on the farm? So, so. Hmm. Nice crop of turkeys you got there. Thank so. $78. Yep, and for nothing, too. Good thing we stopped by this here farm to rest. Yep, and we better get back to our car, too, before the owner of this farm finds out what we've done. <laughs> oh, Lightning, if anybody looking for me, I'll be down in the basement feeding the turkey. Uh, yes, you see. striking in broad daylight, managed to make away with plenty fried turkey. Green acres fun. Come back here, come back here. Come back here. Do it, do it, do it. That old fella and his wife must have been the crook. Uh, it says here in the paper that the police got the number of the car that the crook got away. Holy mackerel. They found the trailers right here to the lodge hall. And here we are stuck with a basement full of turkeys. Me and Andy bound to go up the river this time. We bound to go up the river. Hmm, but wait a minute. We may go up the river. But there's no reason that Andy can't take this crew by itself. <laughs> right, then, proceed with the turkey. Hooey! Hooey! Here, Boston! <laughs> well, come right in, Brother Handley, old partner there. Well, how's everything with the turkey? Any trouble or anything? Oh, no, uh, lightning down in the basement, feeding them now. Oh, fine. <laughs> 
Say, uh, did you mix the BB shot with the feed like you was gonna? Oh, yeah, Andy, I let it up the formula uh, pretty good. Uh, but, uh, Andy, I'm glad you dropped by. There's a little business detail I think we better straighten out. Uh, business detail? Yeah, Andy, a little technicality that uh, we overlooked in the rush of organizing the business. Andy, this company has got to have a president. A president? Oh, sure, Andy, every company got a president. You know, somebody to take the liabilities, the bows, and the handshakes, and the uh, wraps, and any other little thing that might have to come up. You mean you got to have a president just to sell 20 turkeys? Oh, sure, Andy. That's the law. You see, that comes under the Taft Heartburn Act. Well, as far as I'm concerned, you can be president. You got the brain and everything. Oh, no, no, Andy. We're living in a democracy. This ain't no total crime, see? Andy, we got to have an election. And I hereby cast my vote for you as president. Well, it ain't polite to vote for myself, so I hereby cast my vote for you. <laughs> I'm into a little snag here. Well, I think we better do this thing by a secret ballot. I'll tell you what, Andy. You write your vote on that slip of paper, and I'll write my vote on this slip of paper. Well, we put them in the dirty here. It's gonna be a real secret ballot. Now reach your hand in there, son, and go out a vote. One vote for Andrew Brown. Reach in there again, son. One vote for George Steven. Mm. Reach in again there, son. <laughs> Another vote for Andrew Brown. Congratulations, son. You beat me to the one. Practically a landslide. Andy, you are now president of the company. <laughs> Kingfish is as close as I can figure. There ain't but two of us here. But there were three votes in that hat. Well, Andy, uh, you heard of a vote by proxy, hadn't you? Well, there was a proxy vote in there, and you just got peroxided into the job. <laughs> well, there's been nice running against you. Uh, wait a minute, Andy. Uh, you as the president of the company. Uh, we uh, skipped that novel speech and the uh, high silk hat and uh, everything. But you got to take the oath of office. Uh, does? Yeah, Andy, I uh, done rich iron bound thing up here on the typewriter. Uh, read your right hand and I'll minister the thing to you. I, Andrew H. Brown, do solemnly swear that as president of this company, I will assume any and all liabilities and responsibilities that comes up in the future or has already done come up in the past. I further swear that my erstwhile partner, George Stevens, shall be hereafter referred to as in the clear Stevens. Well, so that's all there is to it, Andy. Uh, just uh, put the John Hamhock on there. Well, Andy, you are now president of the company. Uh, tell me something, Kingfish. Uh, how long do you think I'm going to serve? Oh, well, as uh, near as I can figure, it'll be in the neighborhood of uh, 30 days. Kingfish is stuck with stolen turkeys. <laughs> hey, man, that mean you go someplace where it's nice and quiet. Someplace where we can have a nice long talk.
things is, you better tab that iron-bound thing I signed. Well, boys, you can't blame a fella for trying. Oh, that's better. Now, the, the thing for you to do is to go to the police and tell them the whole story. Is you crazy? Go to the police? You think they're going to believe a cock in the bull story that we bought them turkeys from a fella standing by the roadside? Yeah, Amos, you was out of your mind again. Andy, the thing for us to do is hide the car and get rid of those turkeys. Yeah, remove the evidence. Not let the police catch us with the turkey to let die. Oh, that's a crazy idea. <laughs> Boy, leave everything to me. The old kingfish will take care of everything. That's right, Calhoun. I want you to take the turkeys out of the large hall basement and take them out in the country and lose them someplace. All right, Kingfish, all right. I'll get a hold of Lightning and we'll smuggle them turkeys out the basement around midnight tonight. But believe me, Kingfish, I wouldn't do this for nobody else but you. Oh, thank you, Calhoun. Thank you. That's right, Mr. Thompson. I couldn't wait for my husband to do anything about it. You can deliver the 20 turkeys any time at all tomorrow. We'll deliver them the first thing in the morning, Mr. Stevens. Uh, but uh, where are you going to keep 20 live turkeys? Well, it'll only be for two days, and I thought of a wonderful place. Very well, Mrs. Stevens. We'll deliver the 20 live turkeys the first thing in the morning to the Mystic Knights of the Sea Lodge Hall. That's right. And put them in the basement, please. Thanks. Knowing that Calhoun doesn't dump them turkeys out in the country someplace. Ah, uh, you said it, boy. <laughs> well, it's so nice and quiet around here now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I said, Andy, if the police come around looking for us, they won't find no evidence against us. Well, I tell you, Andy. <laughs> That was a good imitation of a turkey you done there, son. <laughs> I ain't open my mouth. <laughs> That's funny. I could have sworn. <laughs> King, I, I, now, don't get excited, Andy. I see what's wrong. I've been worried about turkey so much it done affected my mind. I hear something that ain't there. Yeah, but that something that ain't there, I've been hearing it too, King. Yeah, the mind's a tricky thing, all right. Both of us hearing something that ain't there. <laughs> Kingsley, I agree with you that the mine is tricky and all that. But something keeps telling me that them turkeys are still in that basement. Oh, no, no, Andy. What me and you are hearing here is what they call acoustical illusion. But just to put your mind at ease, I'll call Calhoun and check with him. Uh, it's a nasty illusion, all right. Uh, the Kingfish, you know, I've been thinking that... Hello? Calhoun? Well, this is the Kingfish. Oh, hi, you Kingfish. What's up? Uh, listen, Calhoun, I know this is a silly question, but last night, you did take those turkeys out in the country and dump them, didn't you? Sure I did. Me and Lagner took them turkeys 50 miles out of town. Why are you asking this crazy question? Well, uh, me and Andy having an illusion here. <laughs> Calhoun, are you sure you took those turkeys out in the country and got rid of them? Positively. Them turkeys is now naturalized citizens of New Jersey. 
All I want to know. Hold on. Now you see, Andy, just like I said, uh, just an illusion. Kingsley, this thing is driving me crazy. I'll go in down in the basement and check. Well, go ahead, but I tell you, it's just an illusion. Mm, well, let's see how much I lost on the deal here. Mm, six. Minus 14. Mm -hmm. Divisible by 30. Mm. And, uh, yeah, and there's 19 more of these illusions down in the basement. Well, how do you like that Calhoun? Andy, he didn't get rid of these circuits. Yeah, what you gonna do now, Kingsley? Well, Andy, bring the car around to the back and we'll get rid of these turkeys ourselves. Yeah. You know, Kingsley, it would have been a lot less trouble if the woman's club had decided on me, boss. <laughs> Sapphire. Right here, where have you been? Oh, never mind, Sapphire, never mind. I'm going to go get a glass of water. Say, George, you can forget about the turkeys for the women's club. I got the turkeys this morning from Thompson's Poultry Mart. Good. That's why I've been looking for you. I want you to keep an eye on them. <laughs> you want me to keep an eye on what? On the turkeys. Oh. Mr. Thompson put him in the basement of the lodge hall this morning. <laughs> you say somebody put turkeys in the basement of the lodge hall this morning? That's right. Oh. George, what's wrong? George, what are you up to? Honey, I'm going to tell you something here. And I'm afraid it's going to come as a great shock to you. George, what is it? Honey, I want you to get a grip on yourself. I want you to be calm. I don't know how you're going to take this. George, I've been married to you for 20 years, and nothing's going to upset you. Now, tell me what it is. I'm calm, I'm cool, and I'm collected. And I assure you, I will not get the least bit excited. Well, yeah, what happened? Oh, no! Are you coming around? Are you coming around? Mm. I told you it was going to be a shock. Mm. Oh, George, of all the things you've ever done, messing up my women's club dinner. Twenty churches, and I was responsible. Oh. Well, look, honey, it was all my fault. I'll admit it. I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to get you the money to buy twenty new turkeys. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get you the money. A hundred and forty, a hundred and fifty. Well, honey, I had to hock everything I owned, but I come through for you. George, if you'd have let me do this from the beginning, there wouldn't have been all that trouble. I know, I know, honey. I always mess this things up. You is the smart one. You is the one who gets things done. You bet I do. Miss Johnson and I are getting it today. And believe you me, this time there won't be none of your crazy mistakes. on turkeys, but when we saw your sign, we felt we just had to have ducks for the women's club dinner. It's a pleasure to do business with you. Stop by any time. Thank you. Well, Ma? Well, Paul? We've done it again. 